that we just draw attention to Jesus as we Amen. Hallelujah. We're just going to enter into a time of worship. Um, feel free to stand as all of you pretty much are. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're just going to, I'm going to pray for us and then we'll, we'll sing some songs. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We welcome you into this place, Lord. We just thank you that you've brought each and every one of us here. Thank you for the people that are, uh, are still on their way. I pray that you would bring them, guide them, be with them, um, let them get here safely. I just pray for this time of worship that we would just bless your name, that we would glorify you, and that we would see you and just honor you and just experience what your presence is, God, um, and just see your face today, God. Um, we just come and move however however you'd like to. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 This first song is called The Good Father.
morning. Here we are, Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Therefore, is there any. Therefore, if there's any consequences in the Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affliction of mercy, and fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowlessness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being informed of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition, taking that the from of bond servant and coming likeness of men, and being found in appearance of, of, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death on, of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the, that name which is above every name. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah, huh? That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow hallelujah. of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, that not as in my presence only, but now much more in my obedience, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Yes. Do all things without complaining yes. and disputing, Amen. that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of crooked and preserved, yeah, preservous generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. His word is powerful. And this morning, his word reminds us of his love, of his sacrifice, what he did on the cross for you and me. He left heaven to come to this earth. Amen. He humbled himself in complete obedience to the will of the Father. And he died on the cross for you and me. Right now, we're going to enter the communion, and I would ask uh, Brother Shiju and Sister Karen, would you please come up to uh, help us out to the Lord's table. The Lord's table is very simply celebrated in remembrance of Jesus, his death on the cross, the blood that was shed for us. Not only did he die, but on the third day he rose again. But today we're going to focus on Christ and his humility. 
You know, we all, by nature, it's not like we want to, we could try, but by nature, we all are so selfish. We want to think, yesterday I heard this, we want to think that the world revolves around us. We look at everything in perspective of what we think and what we want. From a young child growing up, we can see that it's so significant, it's so real that we are so selfish by nature. I want to quote my friend who said this, Jesus, he is the one who actually has the world revolving around him. Amen. He's in control of everything. And he is the one who has the right to be self-centered and selfish. He is God and he's on the throne. But yet, for our selfishness, because of our selfishness, because of the first man, Adam, out of his selfish ambition, out of his selfish nature, grabbed on to something that God forbid it, and hence sinned against God. And therefore the entire mankind, as a result of our selfish nature, became under sin. So Jesus, who deserves to be the center of it all, he is the center of it all, but who deserves probably the name of being self-centered, or he is in the center of everything, but he left everything. For you and me, he humbled himself. I used to think when I was young, even while they were nailing him onto the cross, he could have just been like, shoo away, and he could have shoot, just kicked everybody off the cross, and just he could have come back up as this redeemer, savior, but that wasn't the plan of God. So I want you to recognize Christ and his humility on the cross. He humbled himself to the cross and he was obedient to the point of death. And so God exalted him and gave him the name above every other name. So right now, at this moment, we just want to thank him for just leaving everything. The Bible says he emptied himself and came to this world to die for you and God. Let's remember that love. It was love that drove him to the cross. Just for you and me, he emptied himself and became humble and obedient so that we can have hope and eternal life. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus, who came from heaven and died on the cross for you and before our sins, I would welcome you and I would urge you to talk to Jesus and build that relationship with him. And today, if you have that close relationship with Jesus, and if you obey the Lord in water baptism, I want to welcome you to this Lord's table. If you do not have a relationship with Him, and you haven't obeyed the Lord's table, I mean, the Lord's command of water baptism, I would urge you to think about it. And as I always say, I would like to say it again and again. We're not trying to say, don't, 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 don't be part of this. We're saying, be a part of this. So come, let's do this together. Accept Christ and make him your own and have a deep relationship with him. Obey him in water baptism, which is a symbol of his surrender and your inward dedication and surrender to God. And I would say, come, let's partake. right now this moment if you could just all close your eyes for a minute
And just think about the cross and what he did for us. His humility, his obedience to the will of the Father. And let's examine ourselves. As we partake at the Lord's table, as you partake of the bread and the cup of blessing, let it be a truly a blessing for us. Let it be healing and strength. One phrase that you always see that Paul mentions about this do in remembrance of me. Jesus says, this do in remembrance of me. Remembrance of his death. Just remember him. Let's remember what he has done on the cross. While we sing the song, I want you to just meditate upon the cross. Meditate upon his love. The fact that he emptied himself and came down to die for you. Thank you, Jesus.
pray that you bless it and give it to us. As we partake, we remember the sufferings of the cross. We thank you, God, for the sacrifice. Thank you, God, for the humility and obedience so that we could have hope and eternal life today. We pray that you bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's, take, let's take part. same way after the supper he took the cup and he said this is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you remember me let's thank God for the blood that was shed on the cross let this be a cup of blessing for us so father we come before you we thank you for the blood that was shed for us Thank you, Lord, for that innocent blood, the lamb that was slain for our sins. Yes. So because of the shedding of blood, there was remission of sins, and today we have hope. Make this a cup of blessing for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake.
Praise the Lord. Praise God, everyone. So we want to welcome you to the bridge today. Amen. How many of you guys are having a great time? Can we give God a clap offering? Oh, that's pretty quiet. Come on, guys. Let's bring it back together. Let's give God a real clap offering of praise. Come on. Let's go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. For those that know me, they know that I come with energy. I don't like to be quiet. I don't like to be, you know, my house is loud. <laughs> Amen. So we want to welcome you to the bridge. Amen. Um, we are a, uh, a, a church that believes that there's nothing impossible with God. Amen. We're a church that, that is, um, uh, that, that reaches all ages, all groups. You know, just as Jesus did, amen? And, and we believe that there is no one that's perfect uh, other than God himself. So we're, we're uh, imperfect people serving a perfect God, amen? amen? And that's what we share with each other. The word of God says, greet each other with a holy kiss. And that's what that was about, you know, hugging each other, saying a little something about, you know, each other and getting to know each other. So I hope you guys had a great time doing that. We'll get to do that again after service today. I want to welcome you to the bridge. I want to get to a few announcements. Uh, we're going to take a few moments to give. Amen. There's nothing like giving in the presence of God. Um, God Jesus talked about the, the widow that gave two cents and how much that meant, right? So uh, we have an opportunity to give. And if, you're, uh, if God is leading you to do that, please, there's an envelope on your, on your chair. Feel free to use that. Put your uh, name and information, and um, we, you know, make make sure you know you, you take advantage of that. Amen. We also have all those chairs. We have connect cards. If this is your first time, um, by the way, if this is your first time, please don't feel obligated to give her anything. We just want to make sure we gave you that opportunity. But this is your if this is your first time, and you've now or you've never filled out that connect card, please take your time to fill out that connect card. There's a table in the back. You can even put the connect card in the offer basket if you like. Um, we just want to stay connected with you. Uh, we want to make sure we get to get to know you. And by the way, there's an awesome gift at the end. Amen? How many of you guys have had that awesome water bottle? Come on. Come on. Yeah. It's a, it's a cool bottle, so make sure that you uh, take advantage of that. Give it, to, give it in the back, and you'll make sure, we'll make sure you get one. Um, February 16th. How many of you guys know what February 16th is? Plus one Sunday. Plus one Sunday. Someone else said, bring someone to church Sunday. Amen. Amen. It's like bring your kids to work day, except it's bring somebody to church day. <laughs> Amen. So make sure you have someone in mind. Make sure you invite them this week. You know, so you tell them ahead of time. Tell them how, what an awesome time you're having, right? How awesome was worship today? Amen. Yeah. It was great. Amen. So, to, you know, share that with other people and invite people to come. February 16th is that day, so make sure you do that. Um, also, we're going to Sight and Sound. Oh, I'm excited about this. We're going to be seeing Queen Esther, the story of Queen Esther. Amen. I've seen Daniel. That was awesome. I've seen uh, Moses. I've seen Jonah. Yeah, I practically camp out there. But uh, we're going to see Queen Esther. It should be an awesome time. You know, tell your friends, come join us. Sister Myra, can you lift your hands? That's her in the back. So make sure that you see her. Tell her you're interested, and she'll give you all the details. It's going to be March 27th, uh, Sight and Sound. Um, we also do this thing called Connect. Real quick, um, yeah. just so that everybody knows, the tickets for adults are $74, and the children are 34 I know that's a little expensive, but if you want to make a payment plan, you're more than welcome to. Like every week, you can put twenty dollars towards it. Last day to pay every everything is February twenty second. So seventy four dollars for adults, thirty four for kids. 
Um, I think I could still pass for a kid. What do you think? No? <laughs> but, but uh, you know, guys, it's an awesome time. If you guys can do it, it'll be great. You guys will have a great time, and it's going to be a great time at Fellowship. It's a story of Queen Esther. They do an amazing job. And my, Stacey and I, we went to Broadway a few weeks ago. And let me tell you, Broadway's got nothing on, on, on these guys. Just they, they throw an amazing, amazing show. You won't be disappointed. So I just want to make sure you, uh, you guys take part in that. I also want to tell you guys about Connect Groups. Connect Groups is kind of the lifeblood of the church. It's a way for you to connect with, uh, with the people in the church. What we do is we get together. We have uh, a, a uh, what do we call it? The, uh, I don't want to call it the old people group. <laughs> Golden, Angels. Golden Angels group. I'm a part of that group, guys. I can remember. Uh, Golden Angels group. And we have uh, a kind of a, a younger group as well that you can tie yourself to. <laughs> Um, we get together every Tuesdays, we talk about the word, we pray for each other, we support each other, we talk about what we learned on Sunday. Let me tell you, it's a great way to kind of recharge. For me especially, like I'll, I'll, I'll be all ready after Sunday and then Monday hits and work hits and you're, you know, uh, down again or if you're struggling. Tuesday, I look forward to it because you get to come in and, and kind of recharge for the rest of the week. So take part in that. If you uh, have any questions about that, you can see any one of the ushers and we'll, we'll get you tied into that. So it's Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Um, we also have this thing called Grow Track, which is every second and fourth Thursdays. If you're a new believer, this is an awesome way to learn about the Word of God, to learn about the next steps, and you know to develop your spirituality. So make sure uh, you ask one of us about how you can get tied into this as well for Grow Track. And uh, every Friday, we have Friday night prayer. We just finished up our 21-day fasting, guys. How awesome was that? How awesome was that? Wow. If you thought that was awesome, can we give God some glory? Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you, like, it was, I remember last Friday coming to pastor's house for that 21-day fasting. As I'm walking down the steps, you could feel the presence of God. It was unlike anything I've felt before. And then I kneeled and I prayed, and I prayed a specific prayer, and it was between me and God. Amen? And literally 15 minutes later, the pastor comes and says to me, I think I have a word for you, and he proceeds to tell me word for word what I prayed for. Amen. It was incredible. There was no way anyone else would know. Amen? It was between me and God, and God told me what my prayer was and gave me an answer. Amen? That's how awesome and powerful that prayer was. Amen. Can we give God some glory for that? Amen. So Friday nights, we get together and we do the same thing. We get together, we spend time in prayer. We spend time praying for each other, supporting each other. You know, if you've never been a part of it, let me tell you, it's, it's a life-changing kind of experience. It's a powerful experience. Come join us. It's a pastor's house. You know, so we want to fill that house. They have a great basement. We want to fill that house, so ask us for, uh, for more details and we'll get you connected. And finally, Sunday service is at 11 o'clock. Uh, make sure you come here, right? It's at 11 o'clock. Try to come here at 10.45, not Indian time. You know, I'm Indian. We can do Indian Standard Time. 11 o'clock means 11.30. No, no, no. In this case, come at 10.30. Be here. Worship with us. Sunday's at 11 a.m. And, and uh, be a part of our, everything that we do. Stay in touch with our, us on social media. Uh, the Bridge Ben Salem on Facebook at The Bridge PA, at Twitter, and we have an Instagram page at The Bridge PA, and www.thebridgepa.com is our website. So stay in touch with us, and we'll see you next Sunday. Amen? Um, can, I want to say a word of prayer for our pastor as he comes forward. If you guys are ready to receive from the word, I believe that God has a special word for us today. Amen? If you believe that, I want you guys to close your eyes and pray with me as we pray for our, our pastor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you praise, we thank you because we feel your presence in this place. We know, oh God, hallelujah, that you are here and that you're going to speak, hallelujah, powerfully through our pastor, Lord God. We pray that the word may be strong, that it will be just what we need, Lord God, that it would cut where it needs to cut, hallelujah, Lord, that it would heal where it needs to heal, Lord God, that it would strengthen where it needs to strengthen. Father, Lord God, we pray for that your anointing may be upon him. We pray for every person here today that your word, Lord God, may be relevant to them, Lord God. Thank you so much for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
Amen. 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 Amen.
which denomination and you know people believe it, it you know kind of misinterpreted in different ways but it's very clear throughout the scripture that salvation is by grace by faith but then why is Paul saying here to work out your salvation it's a very simple term I'm going to dive into it but very sim sim simple uh, words work out what God has already worked in you. Do you get it? So something that God has already worked in you, you work it out. It's like a math problem. Okay, you have a math problem. The answer is already there. Probably right behind your book, depending on what book. Nowadays, do you have answers behind the book? No? Yes? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, you, the answer is there, but the question is in front of you, and you work out that problem. Equation by equation, maybe expansion, right? <laughs> I was asking. The expansion, me, me and Austin kind of worked this out last week, and honestly, I couldn't help him. Yeah, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm getting old, <laughs> and I'm forgetting everything. Um, it's also like a music composer who kind of writes the music notes on those beautiful, the way it's scripted out, it's like, wow. If I see a music page just by looking at it, I just like, wow, that looks beautiful. I think it's beautiful. But just because the composer put a music on a sheet of paper, that doesn't mean the letters are going to come out and play the music, does it? No. no. The music is there. The final product is there, but unless the musician comes and sits down and starts playing what's on that note, the music doesn't come out. So work out your salvation, work out what's already worked in you. So what God has already done in you, right? You're just playing it out. Make sense? Amen. 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 In other words, we cannot just be some passive Christian, just come on Sundays and listen to some music, say a hallelujah or two, clap your hands, big smile, and go home and think you are doing just great. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Our Christian life need to be worked out. That means it involves work. That, that means we need to be aggressive and active in our faith. Um, how many of you know about you know saying a prayer to you know, uh, receive Jesus in your heart and you confess your sin and a lot of a lot of us sometimes come to church and we say that prayer, oh God, please forgive my sins and, and, and it's so real and there's, there's tears and we truly repent and we turn around and can I be honest with you, that's just the start of the journey. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's just the start. Amen. But once you start a journey, just like how you know, when we start a journey, we are so determined to get to our like our destination. Say, say we are driving to Chicago, for example, right? We, we make sure everything is good and we get going. And even if there's some kind of issues, we try to fix it on the way, right? And because my family is waiting over there in Chicago, I need to get there. I'm so determined that I'm going to, you know, do my best to get there. Of course, this, you know, we don't get there because of what we do, right? Again, always understand that fact. But we need to be determined. We need to be strong. We need to be active in our faith in Jesus. Amen. I know this sounds bad, but I want to talk about spiritual obesity. Mm -hmm. 
You know, when I was in college, the biggest thing the professor always used to talk about, I'm sorry, I, you might think, which age you, do you come from? Uh, which college do you come from? And they were pro professors who would talk about, I don't understand why, you know, uh, you know you're always on your couch uh, uh, watching TV all the time, playing video games all the time, and you're just eating and eating. And, you know, this is the American culture. Have you heard this or is it just me? You know what? Spiritually, we are sometimes like this. We are being fed by God's word. We hear God's word, and we like it. We enjoy it, just like watching TV. You're like, whoa, that was, that was awesome, man. That was a great show. You know what I'm talking about? That was a great show. Oh, by the way, did you watch that? That was crazy, right? That was awesome. This is exactly what we do when we come to church. Pastor's sermon today, was awesome. <laughs> Worship, oh my goodness. Oh, you know, your voice was just amazing. And, you know, we felt great. And so many times, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's awesome. Keep doing that. Honestly, when I hear it, I'm encouraged. When, when the musicians hear it, they're encouraged. We all encourage each other. It's awesome. But it's not about Christianity is not a feel-good journey. Just, just like watching TV and enjoying it, but you're still on your couch. You're being fed, or blah, 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 and you're still on the couch. So I call it, I just termed it like spiritual obesity because we're being fed, but we're not being active about taking what we hear and applying it into our lives. Amen. Practical Christianity. Amen. Amen. How many of us have heard this? Let go and let God. <laughs> it's true for troubles, you know. When, when, you, when you go through things and you are so stressed out, and sometimes we think we are the ones who are going to come up with the solution, we're going to make it happen, and you know, you got to just let go and let God. But sometimes with spiritual life, we take the same attitude, which is not good. Let go. Let go. I'm just going to go to church. God is going to work in me. God is going to have this thunderbolt. It's going to come and hit me. And I'm going to be like, so good. And I'll be happy. And I'll live happy ever after. Amen. It doesn't work that way. What, you mean you don't want to do anything and let God do everything and you just chill? Spiritual obesity. That's not why we are called. God didn't come to this earth and die for us and shed his blood for us and get all that nails on his hands and his feet, you know, and now not only as in my presence but much more in my absence. So Paul is there and everybody's acting so good. Like, oh, oh yes, yes, Paul. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, we will do that for you, right? So he's saying, uh, -uh not. even when I leave, I want you to continue. So, but then the first word says, therefore. What does that mean? Therefore, that means everything that was set before that verse, right? And we read that two times already. What was it all about? It was about Jesus, his humility, his obedience, right? It's, it's all that what Jesus did for us. And so it says, hey, so, so since Jesus did this for us, obey. Obey God's word. So in other words, Christian life is about obeying God's word. Taking God's word, studying it, reading it, asking the Holy Spirit to explain it to us, and, make, and, and making it practical, applying it to our lives. So we can get closer and closer to God. Jesus is the example. So that's what Paul's trying to say. So therefore, so since Jesus did this, you should do this. 
In other words, Paul, Paul is trying to say, maintain a constant energy to finish your task. What is our task? To work on something that was already done for us. Just work it. Play that note. That's already there. 